oben. Me or did she really just won that? Fair and square, Parker. Fair and square. Well, that's embarrassing. Ha! Write that on your resume. Whatever. I still can't believe I beat you at that race. Ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. Open again. Darn it. Darn it. I got my phone. Okay. Friends to see. 
Uh, there might be a door in the custodian area. What was that? Either it's just us or we weren't alone. Oh, we're not alone. I'm sure of it. What are you guys doing here? Well, it's a long story. We were locked in. We didn't mean for any of this to happen. I've seen this happen a few times. Well, at least we're not the only ones. I didn't say it was a good thing. Why not? Follow me. seen a few normal people come in here at night before. Well, at least they were normal when they came in. I mean, something definitely affects people when they come in here. Wait, infected? What's that supposed to mean? Not infected, affected. I mean, people are just different. I mean, it's, it's, it's complicated. They're just different. And it's not just the students that change during the night. We want to thank you for coming in today, but unfortunately, we're looking for someone with fresh ideas, someone who can bring a fresh new perspective to the school. I'm sure you understand. I understand. Too experienced, blah, blah, blah. Heard that before. 90, 95, 100. No. 
Mountain Ridge Middle School, a place for teachers, an institution of fun. But when school is out, the children go outside to play the popular game, Kick the Can. This children's game will soon become a refuge for a man who knows he's going to fade from the world unless he can escape into the Twilight Ridge. Hey, mister, that was our can. We were playing. Hey, mister. Listen to them. How can a man think with those kids playing their games? They've been told not to play on school grounds after school hours. Our insurance won't cover it. The children? They aren't hurting anyone, are they? Teachers need time to work and rest, Jeff. The kids can play somewhere else. They have their playgrounds. They've got their homes. Well, it's the outdoors, John. Kids can't resist. Anytime they got an opportunity to go out and play. What's wrong, Jeff? Nothing. You didn't get the job? No. They wanted somebody fresher, younger than me. You know, they don't want somebody like me hanging around with them. I guess this place is good enough to stick with, I suppose. Listen to them. It's enough to wake the dead. They're playing kick the can for crying out loud. Don't you remember? We used to play it all the time. The same game. All that noise. You can't stop kids from playing kick the can. It's like statues or hide and seek. It's in their blood, McKinney. It's a special childhood ritual. It's almost as if when children stop playing, they grow old. Have you ever thought about it? It's some sort of magic. Can't you see? Jeff, you're not being reasonable. You don't believe in magic, do you? There was a time when you used to. You know, John, we've known each other since as long as I can remember. When we were just a couple of snot-nosed kids, you believed in magic then, but now? Me, magic? Yes, remember when we walked on either side of the street lamp, you'd say bread and butter? Or when your tooth got knocked out and you put it under your pillow expecting the tooth fairy to bring you something? Those were the days. You believed in magic then. What happened to you? What happened to all of us? I got old. We all got old, and now, thanks to you showing up at the park on our last in-service day, we have to work under tight supervision tonight. <sighs> uh, if you had just stayed out of public view when we were supposed to be working. Maybe there are people who stay young. Maybe they keep a secret from us. Stop kidding yourself. Think logically. Maybe the fountain of youth isn't a fountain at all. Maybe it's a way of looking at things, a way of thinking. You're not listening. Stop it. You're an old man. The youth has been out of you for years. What I mean is, you've lived a whole life, Jeff. Your days of youth are gone. You're in good shape for your age. Don't go sloppy on us now. But it's all so clear. It makes such sense. Can't you see it, McKinney? You are quite right to come to me. It's nuts when he acts like this. I don't feel like I even know him anymore. You know, when some people grow old, they begin to act a little peculiar. Mr. Hill, for instance, somehow got a hold of some water balloons and was going to throw them at kids in the commons. What sane person does that? He could have hurt a kid. Every time one of the teachers loses it, I get a little cold inside. I started this job when I was 32, and now I'm 43. Everyone gets old, Mr. McKinney. Even me. What's 
wrong with you people? Don't you have a life? Aren't you the same ones that always went out and used to jump rope and swim in pools? Huh? Come on! Swim in pools! Woo! What are you doing? That's the silliest thing I've ever seen. Well, let him drown himself if he wants. Come on in! The water's fine! Woohoo! <laughs> Mr. Schroyer! Get off the floor. Will you get him off the floor and upstairs? He's got work to do. Come on, let's go. I was afraid something like this was gonna happen. Monday, I'll contact the district and get him help. If that doesn't work, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to let him go. Oh no, this will be the death of him. You keep this up, everyone's gonna get in trouble. You think about that. stuff and show him you're not crazy. You've been acting nuts and weird. You gotta clean it up, dude. What choice do I have? Security all over my back, watch me like a hawk? I'm just supposed to sit here? Dude, they think you're crazy. They're gonna take you away. I'm trying to help you, Jeff. Maybe you're right. for this. We all need to be working. Isn't that what Mrs. Clark said? Did she really say we could go outside to take a break? Well, she said that insurance wouldn't cover us, it wouldn't be safe, we might get hurt. But 
You know, sometimes you just gotta be crazy. So we just gotta go do it. We just gotta go be crazy. What is this all about, Troyer? You gotta be a little bit crazy to make the magic work. It's all about playing kick the can. I think that's where the magic lies. What magic, Troyer? Remember how we used to? We'd sneak out at night. When we used to go out when the weather was all nice and we'd go play kick the can, I really think that playing kick the can is where the magic is gonna happen. Everybody played that kick the can or hide and seek. But that was a million years ago. Well, you know, I remember when back in the day, I used to be the fastest runner there was. Uh-huh. Now, it's sad. I remember. I remember, too. But we all get older. That's what humans do. It's the running I miss the most. Me, too. I think growing old wouldn't be so bad if I could run again. People getting on in years can't play games like that anymore. Yeah. Ah, come on, be optimistic, people. Think about it, if the hunter's handicapped, and the hunted is as well, it all evens out. Oh, come on, Schroyer. Are you kidding me? What is up with this? That's the secret, don't you think? That's it, it's the secret of youth. I, I just don't understand, I don't understand. The secret of youth, Foxy G. Youth. You can't be serious. He isn't serious. But I am. Look. Think. Feel. Doesn't that wake up the sleeping part of you? Listen. Can't you hear it? Summer, grass, running, Jumping, the sky, the fresh air. It's magic. Kick the can. It's the magic thing to do. Living life. Can you feel it? Come on, let's go out and play kick the can. I've got a great idea. Schroeder, what are you doing? Hey, come on. Let's go. Let's go out to the lawn. Me for what? Of course you. Come on, I'm not going to stop now. We've done everything together. Let's come on outside and play kick the can. Jeff, come to your senses. You're sounding crazy. Your youth is gone. You don't have time to play these games. We're adults. You're afraid, John. You're afraid of looking silly to the rest of the world. You're afraid of making a mistake. You're afraid that people are gonna look at you funny. I gotta find out. Jeff. I gotta find out, John. I, help me. I gotta find out if kick the can is the key to youth. There's magic in this world. I know there is. The first time I laid eyes upon the lovely Mrs. Schroyer when my son was born, John, our friendship is magical. Maybe I'm right, McKinney. Maybe kick the can is the greatest magic of all. Are you crazy? Oh, God. All right. I'll do it without you. I'll leave you to your grading. Mrs. Clark! Mrs. Clark! Mrs. Clark, hurry! 
What is it, Mr. McKinney? You're supposed to be upstairs working on your mid-year goals. The teachers. They've gone outside. Well, who? What are you talking about? They've gone outside to play kick the can. I'll go call security and we'll look into it. Is that you? It's me, McKinney, remember? Last of the parking lots are on egg. Wait, wait for me! We looked inside, we can't find him anywhere. You check the hill, I'm gonna check out front. Look all you want, Miss Clark, you won't find them. No child's been left behind. MRMS, a place where, ironically, experienced teachers have forgotten the magic of youth. A place for people who have forgotten that childhood, maturity, and old age are curiously intertwined and not separate. A place for people who have now remembered how to be young in the Twilight Ridge. was totally unrealistic. Yeah, did you take creative writing to come up with that? I mean, I gotta admit it, it's pretty good. It's real! I mean, it's totally real, I'm serious! Fine, then prove it. Prove it? Mm. Oh, I remember. Remember that iLab student? I mean, the one that was totally annoying and, and he talked all the time, that guy? Shayla said that Alexis heard from Jennifer that Aaron was listening by the staff lounge door, and the science department was talking about how the teacher expelled the student, and he was never heard from again. Well, that's not exactly how it went down. Not exactly. You guys come with me. Submitted for your approval, or at least your analysis, one Jack Rennard, who, at age 13, is already the biggest bore on earth. He holds a seven-year record for the most meaningless words spewed on a playground. At precisely this moment, a dull, argumentative big mouth who sets back the art of conversation a thousand years. I say he very likely would have, except for something that happened to him, something that will considerably alter his existence and ours in Twilight Ridge. Now you think about that now. You cannot run the world by standing still in a rut. The world has got to move and it's got to advance. It's got to keep pushing and punching and prodding its way to diversification. That's the word, that's the key. Now you think about that now. Class is over. The planet has got to have variety. 
I was just telling him, you cannot run the world by standing still and doing nothing. Diversification is the key to a successful living. Well, I've got science, math, STEM, language arts, social studies, band, and art. So I'm already diversified and I have a lot of variety in my life, Jack. Yes. Now leave me alone. Now you think about that now. Jack! Jack here. Mr. Cooper would like to see you in his office. Did you guys hear that? Mr. Cooper would like to see me, the amazing and wonderful Jack, the most wonderful and smartest person in all of Mountain Ridge. That's not the only reason why Mr. Cooper would like to see me. It's because I have been feeding suggestions into that iLab suggestion box for over seven months now. Did I say suggestions? Wrong word. Suggestions any Claude can make, but dynamic blueprints only I can make. Now you think about that now. He's waiting, but you would know that if he'd shut up for at least five minutes. Can you try? Can you at least try? I'm afraid I can't do that. I've got to keep the ideas flowing. I can't stop this beautiful mind I've got here. Just leave, please. Oh my gosh. Lots of suggestions about to pay off. <laughs> Say, uh, wouldn't be interested in having lunch with me, would you? You could help me with some of my fantastic ideas. If you were the last person on earth and you had all the smoothies in the world and it meant my survival, then maybe. But I'm not, you're not, and it doesn't, so forget it. Oh my gosh. Fine. I'll do all the brainstorming by myself. Jack, do you know what I've been doing all day? Yes sir, Mr. Cooper, you've been going through that suggestion box. I just knew you would, I've been expecting it. And it takes a very special kind of teacher to realize that one of his students has got this kind of mind. Obviously, I've got it. Yes, I've gone through the residue of the suggestion box for the past three months, and let me let me pull out one of my favorites here. February 13th, make flat hot dogs to fit into hamburger buns. Doesn't that just sound like the best thing you've ever heard? I mean, just think about how much that would change the world. Flat hot dogs for everyone. March 15th, aluminum cans, make aluminum cans square so they fit in recycle bins. Genius. How about March 17th, put little boats in soldiers' backpacks so they can get across a body of water faster? Doesn't that just sound like that's worth a million bucks? I mean, it's, you see, it's useful because the soldier easily... Jack, iLab is a class that focuses on the research, the design method, inquiry, and the four C's. Not one of your 34,000 suggestions has anything to do with that. Not make hot dogs flat so they can fit into hamburger buns, make aluminum cans square so they can fit into recycling bins, or, or putting boats into soldiers' backpacks. That's exactly why I wanted to talk to you, Mr. Cooper. You see, the key to a successful classroom environment is diversification. Now you think I, that- I have thought about that, Jack, and I thought all of this creativity could be um, uh, put to you somewhere else. So as of today, I've had uh, our counselors fill out a schedule change form, and as of tomorrow, you will be in CFS. Uh, maybe in there you can create your flat hot dogs. Good luck, Jack. Joe, baseball? Soccer is where it's at. In baseball, all they do is switch sides, any after any. But in soccer, the whole floor spirit, all they're doing is running, running, and running. Soccer is the most exciting sport in the world. England, France, South America, Spain, you name it. Soccer is the most exciting sport in the world. You think about that now. Hey Joe, I just got another fantastic idea. You know those little swinging doors they have in the western saloons? Why don't you put them here and call it Mountain Ridge Western Cafeteria? You think about that now. Yeah, why don't I just go back in my time machine, sprinkle a little magic fairy dust, and I'll go back and change the whole western culture for you. I can change the whole time and space continuum. Yeah, that'd be something. Great, now every time I look at a history book, I can say I did this. You think about that now. Would you please just let me watch the game? Hey, you know something? Home run hitters mean nothing. Come on, man, we're trying to watch. As to the average long ball hitter compared to a consistent clutch and a good average, I'll take the latter every time. Well, that's very nice of you, Jack. Well, it's a fact. It's an absolute fact. 
Oh boy, here we go again. At no time, at no time, has a home run hitter led the league in batting. At no time. Oh yeah? Chipper Jones won the batting championship in 2008 and hit home run runs very well. Well, think about that. An exception of the rule. Think about that. An exception of the rule. Hey, you know something? There's a 10-inch television screen in my mom's kitchen. It dates back to the 1990s. I've got five siblings, and it's in the other side of the room, and it's boiling hot. But I'll tell you, there's one thing that makes it all worthwhile. It don't have Jack. Agreed. Let me ask you something, Jack. Why are you in here so early today? Didn't you used to have last lunch? Well, it just so happens that I switched class periods. I went into Mr. Cooper's office and I pulled him off. Huh. Yeah, I bet you did. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. He made you switch. Well, uh, in a matter of speaking, you might say, yeah, we mutually agreed that I wasn't going to go there anymore. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> Hey Joe, tell me something. Wouldn't you think that after one whole year of putting suggestions into that iLab box, after one whole year that I'd get noticed? Being noticed and being liked are two different things, Jack. What do you know? Nothing. Not a thing. Well, see you later, Joe. You know what? What I do know is that you come in here every day of every week of every month boring people out of their skull. Walking all over your bottom lip. Now, would you think about that? Think about that, will you? Will you? Will you think about that? What do you say? Well, I'd say, uh, that's how I roll. I would also say, LOL, and on occasion I would say owned, though I would spell it with a P. Would you like another smoothie? Uh, yeah, I would really appreciate another smoothie. Two more smoothies, Joe. What do I look like, your butler? Say, so, uh, what's your name? Uh, it's Potts. Oh, that's not a bad name. Well, I was born with it. Seems to me like there used to be a third baseman and he used to play for the Phillies. Uh, couldn't it be a Lou, Lou Potts, Phil Bots, couldn't it be Bots? No, no, it's Potts. Two smoothies. You paying for this, Jack? This guy just gave me his last dime and since it's his first day, we don't have an account set up for him yet. This guy just happens to be my friend, Bots. Potts. Uh, I appreciate a little respect from you. I bet you would. You getting respect from me would be about as easy as getting a ride home on the last day of school at 2.45 while it's raining. Never mind that. Drink up, pal. What do you want to talk about? Want to talk about baseball? Uh, yeah, it's a great American sport, and I'm very glad Abner Doubleday sought to invent it. Cheers. To your health, friend. <laughs> Down the hatch. And now, for your generosity, I have a gift. A small remembrance of our friendship. What is it? It's a stopwatch. An old family relic. Well, what do you do with it? It just, uh, it doesn't keep time. It's, it's just a stopwatch. That is a fact, but it's yours. Use it for whatever you want. Well, what do you do with it? I mean, it's just, it's just a stopwatch. All right, well, let's just say one day you own a racehorse and you want to time it, or time your mile in PE, or even launch an astronaut into space. Well, so long, old friend. So long, smoothie tender. Ha! Smoothie tender. I should have listened to my mother. She wanted me to be a doctor, but no, I had to be a cafeteria manager. Ah, well, you live and you learn. You done for the day, Jack? Everybody's gone. You bored them all to death. You emptied the commons like it had viral meningitis. Do me a favor, will you? Next time you get thirsty, just go to the water fountain.
You know, I don't really feel much like going back to class. I already know how to combine like terms. <laughs> I can even graph a formula. Sometimes I even wish I had a girlfriend. You get that feel? Joe? Joe? All I was doing was telling you how bored I was and some crazy kid gave me the stopwatch and I sat down and I pushed it like this. Well, that's another thing, Jack. You come in here every day, boring people to death, and you leave your mess every time. You know something, Jack? You're the one guy that makes me regret adding the smoothie machine. Something tells me this is a very unusual stopwatch. And another thing, Jack? Jack? I'm over here. I, I got this way. Why? Oh, yes. what do you mean? Why? Yes, there's the why. It's a gimme. Selena Gomez is the best. I know, right? She's not. You're crazy. You're crazy. Can't be. I've had too many smoothies. I need some time to calm down. Jack, could you please sit down? It's time for class. What? For Jack. Hey Jack, do you have a suggestion again? Because I have one for you. Why don't you go away? I've got an idea for you that'll put a dent in your eyeballs. What do you say to a stopwatch that when someone pushes it, everything stops dead? Everything. You think about that now. Jack, why don't you run away and get lost? Or else get to the point already? I already have. You see, a little while ago, I was in the cafeteria talking about this and that when this funny kid gives me the stopwatch. And without thinking, I push this button, this one right here, and everything stops dead. Everything. Think about it. Joe sees a smoothie spill, he bends over to pick it up, and he freezes. Everything. Buses, trains, students, teachers. Everything stops. You think about that now. 
Spanish 6th and English 8th, so I can probably come in after English and talk to you about the new homework assignment, because I know I just need Everything to stops. Teachers, cars, everything. You think about that now. Teachers too, huh? It's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Now, get out of here, will ya? Uh, I'm in a conference with Mr. Cooper. It is time to diversify. Uh, no, now, just a minute. Mr. Cooper's on... He's, he's on the phone. Uh, yeah, yeah, honey, I can, uh, I'll certainly stop by and get more diapers because I would rather deal with dirty diapers than what I'm about to deal with. Oh, yeah, he is, with Jack. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cooper. Right after work, sure, sure. Yeah, I won't be, I won't be. Oh. Jack, you already switched classes. What are you doing back in here? I'm sorry, I told him to leave over and over, but he didn't listen to me. If he barges right in, he can barge right out! Listen, Coop. C Coop? You can't afford to switch classes on me this time, because I have more than suggestions. I have the goods. Now you listen here. You figure out how this little doohickey of a stopwatch works, and you've got yourself a million bucks. Jack, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. We focus on the four C's here. That's it. Nothing else. The four C's. Now you've got about 15 seconds to get up and get out of my office. Get out! Hey, can I buy you a smoothie? You know what? I can buy my own smoothie. And if you're not out of my face in five seconds, I'm calling security. And you can't stop me. Hell, is that so? But it'll take more than the guards. You'll need the entire army and the navy combined. Secure it! Huh. Well, this might be good for a laugh, maybe. But there must be something else I can do with this thing. I'll think about it. Hey, Joe, all you guys, have I got something to show you? Well, that wraps up the game. Now, you listen here. Last night I was at the Vista basketball game, and uh, I was watching the game, and while Vista was shooting the three point basket, I paused the game. I stopped the game. What about your Do mouth? <laughs> the game and I got in my seat yeah I did and I went down to the court and I moved the ball two feet up I did I did and what happened is they ended up making the shot instead of missing it by two feet and it really happened and they they won the game because of me and that's not all I can do with this watch I can do much more you see
this. No, no. I'll turn it back on. I'll turn the game back on. Great. Well, you've done it again. Cleared out the whole commons. You're better at that than recess. I get it, I get it. You guys didn't see because you were all frozen. I'm the only one who knows. The only one. The greatest conversation piece in history, and what does it do? It stops conversation. Well, I'm gonna close up in a couple minutes. It shouldn't be a total loss. You better order up. Mango smoothie. Smoothie it is. Don't you ever order any food? Hey, drink it fast, will you? The combination of this hot weather and my new business recession is all I can handle for today. And another thing. Give me a heart attack and clean up after yourself this time. Hey, Joe. Come here. Look at me. What are you, some kind of hypnotist? A jerk, a nutcase. You gonna stop there or go for more on too? Why do I want this thing? It's because I want a little notice, that's why. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit it. And I'll also tell you this, when Brad Pitt steps out of a car and people want to take selfies with him, you know why? Ah, uh, why don't you tell me? Because he's loaded, that's why. He's got the Benjamins, the cash, the moolah. And why do you think when Two Direction walks into a restaurant? One, just one. Oh. Why do you think when One Direction walks into a restaurant, the waiter breaks his back trying to set up a table for them? Because they're loaded, that's why. Also, take a good look at the old Jack. Because tomorrow you're going to see the new Jack. As of tomorrow evening, I'm going to be loaded. Why don't you just go whole hog and move to Honolulu then? Oh, by tomorrow, I'll be able to buy Honolulu. Stand up! Talk! Do something! Oh, come on. I, I don't care about the money anymore. I don't want to be noticed. Does anyone know how to make this watch work again? Anyone? Say something! Anyone! Please!
sorry. Joe, anyone? Jack, who had a gift of time, he used it and he misused it. And now he's just been handed the dough in this tale of moments in Twilight Ridge. Wow, that was the most awesome, most unique, most unrealistic thing I have ever heard. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's impossible to stop time. And what's up with this Twilight Ridge thing? It's Mountain Ridge. Not at night, it isn't. Whatever. Fine. Follow me. down those stairs. Well, do you know why? This story is absolutely amazing. You're going to love this one. Missing one frightened little girl. Name, Tina Miller. Description, 13 years of age, average height and build, light brown hair. Last seen, working in her STEM class, finishing up some assignments. Last heard? That's the strange part. But Tina Miller can be heard quite clearly, despite the rather curious fact that she can't be seen Help! at all. Present location? Let's say, for a moment, in the Twilight Ridge. Help! Did you hear that? Uh, yeah. I'll go check it out, I guess. Okay. Who's there? My name is Tina Miller. I don't know what's going on and I can't see anyone. What happened? I just walked down the staircase to use the bathroom and everything suddenly disappeared. Hey, I don't think you're supposed to go down the stairs, Tina. I didn't think it would matter after school hours. I'm I'm pretty sure there's a reason it's called the Forbidden Staircase. What are you doing here? When did you get here? You were gone for a while, so I came to check on you. Oh, well, I'm fine. I'm just trying to figure out where this Tina kid disappeared to. What? What are you talking about? I, what happened? I honestly don't know. Where is she? She's not here. Ha! <laughs> what do you mean she's not here? Come see for yourself. Hello? Kira, is that you? Tina, where are you? I don't know. I just walked down the staircase and I'm somewhere strange. We're not in school. You walk down the stairs? You know you're not supposed to use these stairs. Yeah, I think I realized that. Chris, where is she? You think I know? Well, can't we just go down and get her? Uh, no. One, we're not supposed to go down there. And two, we might get stuck wherever she got stuck. Then how are we supposed to get her? I don't know, but we have to figure this out. Tina? I'll go find help. looking for you. Sorry, I was in Gamma Nu. Sorry into that, Dr. Whatchamacallit. Yeah, well, um, it's actually called Doctor Who, not Dr. Whatchamacallit, or whatever you said. Um, and yeah, I live on Doctor Who. What do you need anyways? This theory on the invention of waffles? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm asking you. This girl, Tina, has just disappeared. She went down the stairs and just gone. 
I need you to follow me. Hold on, hold on. Have you seen my robot? Yeah, I almost stepped on him. Okay, okay. Doesn't she know that's forbidden? Just come here. Okay, guys. Tell me I don't exactly know what's happening. So, just a few minutes ago, Tina startled us with her crying. I asked her what was wrong, and she said she got lost. I went to go find her, but I couldn't. So, then I eventually came here to find out that she went down the forbidden staircase. Okay, then what happened? And then Kira came to find me to ask me why I didn't come back to the classroom. I explained everything and told her to stay here while I went to go get you. Human assistant mode initiated. Must find and help human in danger. Well, uh, it means my robot's fine, and that must mean that Tina's fine too. And that human assistance mode is only activated when it senses danger. All right, all right, let's just get this over with. Okay, but before we do, you guys have to promise something. What? No more making fun of me for liking Minecraft, building robots, or especially Doctor Who. Fine. Okay, now that we have that covered, uh, did you guys feel around here? Um, does it feel different than usual? No, but we looked. And what? Nothing. Well, that, that helps a lot. What are you looking for, Bill? An opening of some sort. An opening? To what? I'm not quite sure, but I have a theory. It's hard to explain. Huh? huh? Just trust me. Gives. I had this feeling you you were going to step on her. I don't think I would. Come on, have some faith in me. Man, it's so dark down here. Yeah, I can't see anything. What the heck? It's the opening. I think... To what? To another dimension. Okay, Bill, you have got to be crazy. There has to be some kind of logical explanation for this. Well, I don't know if I'm right, but... I can't think of anything else. And that's where the robot must have gone through too. Yeah. If the robot went in there, then why can't we? They both sound fine. No, we, we don't know what's in there. I have to go and my friend is in there. I know you want to, but we can't. But for crying out loud, she's probably right on the other side. Why can't we just reach in and pull her out? Well, if it's that simple, why hasn't my robot found her yet? There has to be something we can do. Well, uh, I'll be right back. How's everything going up there? Am I going to live? E you'll be fine, Tina. Bill has a plan. He just needs to grab a few things. Okay, hurry. It's getting really, really weird in here. What do you mean, really weird? Okay, okay. Good. Now, before you get to the plan, can you please explain this other dimension thing? See, the third dimension is just a step below the fourth, Chris. It's a big step, but granted, it's just one step. Now, every point in our space is part of a perpendicular line, fourth dimension. So? So all the wall of lines forming the fourth dimension are perpendicular to every point in the third. They're not necessarily parallel to us, but if enough of the lines are parallel at both dimensions at a given area, it might create an opening. Has this opening always been here? 
It might have been. I doubt it, though. Believe me, I'm not time traveler. Who is? Doctor Who and his TARDIS traveling through space and time. I can't hear Tina anymore. What? Oh no! Tina! Cool down. Start, start moving around. What? Move around and, and be quiet. What good will that do? Start looking for her. Where? Anywhere. Here, let's go back upstairs and check in the eight yellow pod. If she went through the other dimension through the staircase, what is she doing here? Chris, her movements might to seem to us as all over the place, but to wherever she is, it's completely normal. Huh? Let's just focus on finding Tina. Hey, I've got an idea. How about we call my robot? Why? Come on, just trust him. From watching all that Doctor Who, he has to know everything there is to know about space and time. Well, not everything. Mac, do you have Tina? Subject located. Men's human escort. Affirmative. Commencing human escort protocol. Follow the robot, Tina. Will he take me to where you guys are? Yes, Tina, just follow the robot. Mac, track the sound of my voice to find my location. Affirmative. Sound tracker engaged. Tracking voice. Mac, come here. Location cannot be found. Call the robot again. Here, Mac. Here. Come out! Oh, Bill, can't we just go in? I'm scared for two. We can't take any chances. Here, Mac, do what you're programmed to do! Affirmative. Hold it. He's doing it. Man, what a piece of mechanical engineering. Come on out, boy. Here we go. Come on out, Mac. Tina? Kira? Tina! Mac, bring her out! We're here! We're here! We're right here! Why doesn't he do it? <laughs> Matt, bring her out! Chris, where are you? I can't see you! We're right here! Call Tina! No, Tina, my hand! My hand! Take a hold of it! Here, here! Robot command changed. Change voice to Chris. Affirmative. I can't see it, Chris. Hurry up, Chris. Here. I can't see it. Can you hear me? Chris, where are you, Chris? I'm right here, Tina. Follow the sound of my voice. Tina. Where are you, Chris? That might not work, Chris. Get my robot to bring her to you. And hurry. Right here. Do you see me? Is that you? Grab onto Mac. Do you hear me? Grab onto Mac. I'm here. Get a good grip on him. Okay. Okay, don't let go of him. Here, boy. Hurry, Chris. We don't have much time. Hold on tight. Don't let go. Okay, hold on tight, okay? I have a good grip on you. Hey, Chris, where are you? I'm right here. Just follow my voice. I got her. I got her. I got Tina. Grab the robot. Okay, but what are you going <laughs> We have got to get off of these stairs. Oh man. What happened? I pulled you out. But uh, how could you see me? Couldn't even feel you. Why didn't you want me to reach in there? 
because the portal was closing. And that's why I told you to hurry. It's closing the whole time you were in there. So a few more seconds and half of you would be here and the other half, it would not. Okay, you're expecting us to believe there's some portal to some other dimension or something? I'm sorry, but that's impossible. Well, in this school it isn't. What do you think this is? The Outer Limits? Well, okay. You don't have to believe if you don't want to. And I don't. Well, I'm out of here. Right behind you. <laughs> oh, they'll believe. They always do. was weird. Agreed. Those stories were like totally unrealistic, but they seemed true somehow. I know, right? And he was the weirdest part of all of it. Darn it. I forgot my phone.
Thank you.